Welcome back. This is News Extra. Now, we all know what the tourism industry is worth to us here in Norfolk. Last year, it was calculated it was worth more than £3 billion for the first time. But are the goalposts moving after Britain voted to leave the EU? Does it mean more people will be holidaying closer to home? Will more people from Europe be coming to visit us as they aim to get a bit more fun for their euro. Well, a tourism survey is being started that should give us a good snapshot of the state of tourism in Norfolk as we go into 2017. Chris Scargill from Larkin Gowan Chartered Accountants and Business Advisors is my guest tonight. They're the ones putting all of this together. We'll hear from Chris in just a moment, but first let's take a, a look back on how we reported that very special £3 billion figure last autumn. As the summer season comes to an end across Norfolk, it's time for tourism bosses to crunch the numbers and see how our county's done. Early figures are suggesting it could be a record breaker, but while that's still up in the air, there is time for celebration, as it's officially been confirmed last year was the best ever, tipping over the £3 billion mark for the first time. With visitor numbers up 20% this summer, Bewilderwood near Horning is one of those attractions unsurprised by the good news. Well, Norfolk is still a little bit of a secret to many in the UK and so I think there's quite a long way to go upwards yet and the, the tourist offer here is enormous. Norfolk has got Norwich, it's got all these beautiful towns, yes it's got the beaches and great beaches while we're at it, it's also I think people are clocking a message that it's the driest part of the UK and the weather is often not so hot across the rest of the UK and it's gorgeous here and I think that counts for a lot. The £3 billion figure comes from adding the amount spent directly by visitors to the indirect spend by those working in the tourism industry and thanks to an increase in overnight trips it's up £100 million on 2014. It's partly being put down to big projects from the likes of Visit Norfolk and the Broads Authority promoting the county around the rest of the country. But Maxine Cullerton from the Sea Life Centre in Yarmouth says businesses themselves have been putting a lot of work in too. What we try to do is do different events, um, introduce something different each year, um, year upon year, so that people, when they come to visit the centre, they're doing different activities and different things. It's not the same old and I believe that other attractions are doing the same thing. And I would say over the last few years, you know, we've certainly seen um, record-breaking um, visitors. These new figures mean the county's overtaken some of the biggest tourism hotspots in the country. In 2015, Suffolk generated £1.85 billion. Cornwall and Devon each made £2.4 billion, while Norfolk brought in £3.06 billion. The only places that made more were Yorkshire with 7 billion and London at a huge 15 billion. But what is the best thing about coming to Norfolk? Beach, probably. Nice. Best bit. I mean, the sea life is really good. We've thoroughly really enjoyed that. The beach is fantastic. You've got the seashore up there. That's a lovely sight. Right close to the race course, golf course for me, and close to the sea for the kids. I don't know, you've got everything, haven't you? It'll be another year before we know exactly how the county's performed this summer, but with the staycation trend staying strong and marketing projects looking overseas, bosses are predicting more record-breaking years on the horizon. Lauren Hewitt, Mustard TV, Great Yarmouth. So that was the report from last autumn about just how much the tourism industry is worth to us here in Norfolk. But let's take a look at behind those figures and what it means. Um, Chris, when we're doing these surveys, what, what's the point? What's the value of doing them? 10, 11 years ago, we were looking at what the industry had available to it in order to measure itself, to provide benchmarking. And there wasn't anything available locally. Uh, there was the national survey undertaken providing data across the whole of the UK and providing a little bit of information from a very few businesses locally. There was nothing that was collective and actually all-encompassing. So we actually looked at that and said, actually, we need to provide something. So we joined up with the, the local destination marketing organisations and tourism bodies and said, right, let's get together and work on this. And it's grown from that point there of providing some initial outline information to the the information it provides today, covering a whole wide variety of information from simple turnover through to some of the stresses and challenges available and, and you know, hitting the businesses um, day to day. So how do you actually get all that data together when you're actually looking at how the, the tourism industry is doing? Is, is it simply talking to the attractions? Is it the restaurants, pubs, hotels? How wide does it go? We have, over the years, created 
uh, associations with the businesses themselves. They've kindly provided us with their data. We do not use it for anything else. We only contact them each time there is a survey. So we send out the information to them with all the questions on. We are supported by Visit Norfolk. We're supported by the destinations, uh, the local destinations. They all s contact their members and say, please support this survey as well. So we get a good collective. And we had last year over 350 responses, which is one of the biggest independent surveys of its type around. Because when any of these surveys come out, when it comes to Norfolk's tourism industry being worth some three billion pounds, I can guarantee the first thing people say afterwards is, how on earth do you actually work out a number? When uh, that many people are buying your ice cream, that mean many people are, are, are you know, renting a deck chair or, yeah. or whatever. How does that number actually get reached? The, the survey that we undertake does not try and estimate that number. We leave that to the businesses who um, put together the, what is called the Cambridge model and that undertakes a sample and they extrapolate that sample across the number of businesses and the number of impact points from you know, measurements on gross spend. So if there's so much income, there is so much spend, so much spend then feeds down the line into so many jobs and they roll that out. Our survey concentrates on the percentages of growth of the individual businesses themselves, not necessarily the whole collective. So it, it's worked out over a, over a wider... The, 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 the one that, for the three, three billion pounds is worked out over all the businesses using a tried and tested model. Now we know that three billion was a, a, a record number, a very positive outlook for, for tourism in Norfolk, which is good news. I think you push to find someone in Norfolk who doesn't know work, somebody who works in the tourism industry. But I guess is it important to work out negatives as well, find out the weaknesses? Is that part of this too? It is. I mean, the... The industry, as we've heard, is worth over three billion pounds um, across across Norfolk. 2016, we'll see that increased. I'm confident that we'll see that increased. There's over 55,000 jobs reliant on the tourism sector. So you need to know when the trend starts to work against it and what those factors might be. And I think that there are you know, times when businesses do struggle. Last year, in, in, in our survey in 2016, we were able to identify that two-thirds of businesses saw their turnover increase. That did, however, of course, mean that one-third stayed the same or saw a decrease. So our information helps those businesses benchmark themselves, identify needs to change, and hopefully encourages them to grow. Now, as I said at the start, the goalposts may well have moved since the last time one of these surveys were carried out. We are in what will be post-Brexit Britain, I suppose. From what you're hearing from, from different businesses, from people within the industry, are, are they positive that it could actually be a good thing for, for tourism in Norfolk? Maybe more people staying here or more people coming from abroad? I think the opportunity for Norfolk has been that we've seen the, the value of the pound fall uh, against the euro. As a result of it falling, it costs more to go abroad. We won't have seen that in 2016, but we're starting to see the impact of that for 2017. What will also happen is that we will see people coming from abroad. They'll see the UK as a destination that becomes suddenly more competitive than it was before. So I think we'll see uh, more people holidaying in the UK. It's a great place to come. Norfolk, as we know, is unexplored. There's lots of people who haven't found it yet. Once they come, they come again. So I think we will see a greater opportunity. But of course, there are going to be challenges. There are going to be some of the workers who we know come from abroad seasonally, may not want to come now. So we, we're, we're asking in our survey some of the questions that may just start to see a tipping point as to some of the challenges that we may face against the positive news of the potentially higher numbers. And, and just in 10 seconds, why is it so important that so many businesses do get involved and participate in this? The information that we provide together is collective. Working together, we're stronger together. The information we produce goes out to the de decision makers and that's what makes it important. Knowledge is power. Thank you very much indeed, Chris. That is all the time we have for this evening. As ever, you can always join the conversation on Twitter. We are at Mustard TV. Just use the usual hashtag News Extra. And if you do want to know more about the survey, all the details are on your screen now. But my thanks now for Chris for his time this evening and to you for watching. Have a very good night.